Uh, <clears throat> I think, first of all, I should make clear I'm not Irish. Um, my name is Patrick, but uh, I'm not the Irish type of Patrick. Yeah. And um, so I, I would like to thank uh, you know, very much, Joe, for inviting me once again. I was here, uh, I think, uh, seven years ago, uh, roughly. And uh, these were still difficult times. Uh, the economy was very recovering for a big recession. Unemployment was very high, had a big fiscal deficit. Um, it, was, it was really difficult. Uh, now, look at Ireland, you know, how the great the recovery has been. Uh, so um, I think uh, uh, we should enjoy the uh, strength of the economy and uh, uh, benefit from the good times uh, while they last. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very glad to be back to Donegal. Uh, Donegal hasn't changed much, uh, but I think that's the right thing to do. You know, don't change it. It's such a beautiful place. Uh, place. <laughs> Um, so, um, I'm not Irish, uh, so I'm not going to go into the sort of details uh, 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 of the previous panelists, but uh, um, I reassure you, I agree with uh, a lot of what has been said before. Uh, I will try to, get, uh, to give a bit of an international perspective to uh, this consideration. Um, I think uh, the previous speech by Seamus was great, uh, so I agree with uh, many uh, of what he said about uh, the assessment of the economic situation and the fiscal situation. Uh, actually, I would like to give a lot of praise for the work of the Fiscal Advisory Council. Uh, this is a, a terrific group. Uh, they produce terrific reports. I think uh, everybody should download them and uh, read them. Uh, this is uh, fantastic work, and I think you're doing a great service uh, to the country, uh, so congratulations for that. Uh, <laughs> keep, keep doing it. <laughs> so I agree with um, the previous speakers that uh, the economy is, uh, is doing very well, and uh, the short-term outlook is very positive. Uh, at the OECD, we pro project uh, GDP growth for Ireland of 3.9% this year, 3.3% next year. Uh, now, uh, this, these are very strong numbers. Uh, uh, I can compare these numbers with the OECD average, uh, so 3.9% uh, this year. Um, this is about uh, twice uh, uh, the rate of growth um, in the overall OECD and about three times the overall rate of growth in the Eurozone. Uh, the same thing for next year. So these are very strong uh, growth rate, and I think uh, uh, we should all enjoy uh, this uh, very strong growth. So I know that uh, there's a lot of distortion, and uh, I, I can see that John is looking at me with uh, some skeptical eyes because he's done great work to try to decipher the mystery of uh, Irish GDP. Uh, but uh, I think when the people try to strip out uh, the contribution of multinational enterprises to uh, GDP growth, uh, there's still a lot of good growth going on here. So it's not only the magic of the numbers and the distortion. I think there's a genuine uh, good thing going on. The strength of the economy is here. It's shown by a strong growth of consumer spending, um, very low unemployment, uh, not everywhere. Uh, it would be nice to have lower unemployment in Donegal, uh, or on average in the Republic, uh, the labor market is very strong, and indeed there are even labor shortages. So the question is um, how much overheating uh, there is. Uh, I think uh, Seamus uh, sort of hit, hinted that uh, the economy is growing too fast. Um, so, um, you know, I wish I could tell you, and the answer is I, I don't know, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I, I, it's a pity that uh, the, the profession of economics has not been able yet to come up with a good model to, uh, under, to, to estimate uh, how much overheating there is in an economy. We disagree among ourselves with so many things. Uh, you know, there is the Phillips curve. Uh, um, we, don't, we don't even agree among ourselves whether the Phillips curve is dead or alive. Um, so I think the situation is quite mixed. Um, it's very overheating. And overheating would be a bad news. It's something that could go wrong, right? Because we know when it's overheating, you know, something bad will happen. Um, so uh, mixed signals, uh, inflation is low. Uh, on the other hand, wage pressure are high. Uh, the average wage growth is 4%. So 
So it's nice to receive uh, strong wage increases, but uh, that might not be sustainable for the economy. It will make uh, uh, companies less competitive. Uh, um, there's a lot of activity in the construction sector, uh, which is a good thing, but there are co capacity constraints, and it's difficult to build more houses because the sector is working at full capacity. Um, the labor market is tight, so that's a sign of uh, um, overheating. Um, and the policy mix is quite expansionary. I think we heard from Shimus that uh, uh, fiscal policy is actually expansionary, you would say, uh, too much uh, spending. Uh, and of course, monetary policy uh, conducted in the, uh, at the ECB is very expansionary and might even become even more expansionary. On your hand, uh, the central bank of Ireland is doing a great job to try to protect financial stability. Um, they have these uh, so-called macroprudential measures uh, that uh, not everybody likes uh, but because they might uh, restrict access to housing, but they are the right thing to do. They recently proposed to activate uh, the so-called systemic risk buffer for banks to make the banks uh, safer. So uh, I think overall it's a mixed picture. Um, to me, it's not obvious that, uh, whether the economy is overheating or not. Uh, uh, but what is clear to me is that there are many downside risks and many things that could go wrong. That I know for sure. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let, let me um, uh, go through some of these uh, downside risks. Uh, but in view of the uh, downside risks facing the economy, I think, the, uh, as uh, the previous speaker said, the right thing to do at this stage is to be prudent and uh, you know, be ready uh, in case these downside risks uh, materialize, uh, and try to reduce uh, the public debt, which is still uh, pretty high. So one of the downside risks, of course, as uh, has been uh, discussed before, is uh, a no-deal Brexit. Um, Ireland is probably the most uh, exposed country in Europe to a no-deal Brexit. Uh, you're still highly integrated to the UK. Um, Exposure to the UK has declined, but still 17% of Irish export of goods and services are going to the UK. Um, and so they would be hit uh, by import tariff uh, in case uh, there is a no deal and uh, uh, the UK revert to the WTO uh, most favored nation uh, situation. Uh, so that would be bad news for exports. Uh, Actually, uh, some of the uh, model estimate that we've done suggest that uh, if the, the relation between the UK and the EU uh, return to the most favored nation, which is the basic principle under the WTO, um, some sectors would be uh, seriously affected, uh, especially agriculture um, and uh, the, 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 the food industry. And Irish export in these sectors could decline by uh, as much as 20%. But it's not only a story of export being hit, it's also a story of imports. Uh, about 90,000 Irish firms depend on the goods imported from, from the UK to do their business. Um, if um, the goods imported from the UK uh, were subject to, uh, once again, to custom inspection uh, or control. Uh, this control would increase nine times. Um, so there would be a lot of disruption uh, at the border for goods uh, imported, a lot of administrative burden. Um, and uh, um, the smooth crossing of the border that we have today would disappear and that would disrupt the existing uh, supply chain. Uh, um, on the labor market, the Irish and the uh, UK uh, labor market are highly integrated. Uh, that's one of the benefits of the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, there are 400,000 people born in Ireland that live in the UK. It's about 7% of the Irish population in the UK. Um, hopefully, they will be able to stay there, but uh, uh, it's not entirely clear what will happen. So there's a lot of certainty uh, about what uh, will happen. Uh, um, in our model, uh, when we simulate a no-deal Brexit, uh, a return to the most favored nation, uh, GDP uh, could decline by 1.5% compared to the level without uh, Brexit uh, after um, five years and 2.4% after 10 years. So, 
But um, should we believe this model estimate? Well, they are, you know, just model estimates. So uh, maybe these estimates are too optimistic, and it could be that, uh, you know, things would be worse. Um, there could be a lot of uncertainty uh, that would, um, uh, and bis businesses could cut back on investment. We don't know how the exchange rate uh, uh, of the sterling would react. We don't know um, how uh, sovereign risk uh, premium would react. Uh, so uh, it could be it could be worse. So, so what to do uh, in uh, this case? And I think the previous speakers asked the question: What should fiscal policy do in case of a No Deal Brexit? Uh, and uh, I don't think the OECD has uh, uh, yet uh, proposed anything. But uh, uh, in their latest uh, report, the IMF uh, gave the following advice: uh, In case of a No Deal Brexit, the government should let automatic stabilizer operate freely, in other words, they should uh, allow uh, the, the deficit to increase, and they should provide targeted, temporary, and effective support to hard-hit sectors. Um, the government should also prepare for fiscal stimulus, depending on the severity of the downturn. In the event of a short contraction in bank credit, the, the central bank should revise the counter cyclical capital buffer. So what the IMF here is saying is that uh, in case of a no-deal Brexit, fiscal policy should become more supportive and bring the support that an uh, uh, Irish company uh, would uh, uh, deal with. So we need to prepare for that. Uh, this is uh, something that could go wrong. Uh, and um, during the good times, um, um, it's uh, the right time to prepare and get ready uh, for this uh, type of shock. Uh, Brexit is not the only thing that could go on. Of course, it's been mentioned before. Uh, trade disputes uh, are uh, going on uh, uh, between the U.S. and China. Uh, next uh, trade dispute could be between the U.S. and the EU. Um, uh, there could also be a severe uh, global uh, slowdown of uh, economic growth, uh, which would affect Ireland as a small, very open economy. So given this risk, I agree with a uh, previous speaker that, uh, especially Schumus, that uh, fiscal policy should be prudent, continue to reuse public debt, uh, have a cushion to use in case uh, something happens. So I agree with him that um, you know, the exceptional surge in corporate tax revenue should be saved rather than the spent. Uh, um, actually, the Fiscal Advisory Council and also the IMF have proposed some good ideas of uh, an automatic rule uh, to save exceptional um, surge in corporate, corporate tax revenue. Um, and I also agree with uh, Shemas that um, you know, channeling this exceptional tax revenue into spending very quickly um, run the risk of wasteful spending. It's actually very difficult to spend a lot of money quickly. Um, well, okay. It's actually very difficult to spend a lot of money wisely and effectively. Just have to increase salaries, right? Uh, that would be an easy way to uh, increase spending, but uh, probably the most. Uh, yeah. uh, and I think we heard that uh, you know, the uh, sharp increase in spending in the healthcare sector or a sharp increase in the infrastructure, infrastructure investment uh, tend to lead to cost overruns, inflation, uh, rather than better public services to the citizens. So I agree we should be careful, but uh, that doesn't mean we should stop spending. And uh, we have nothing at the OECD against the plan to increase public investment, especially in infrastructure, public transport, education, skills. Um, if these uh, spending plans are well designed, um, they come with high uh, social rate of return, uh, cost overrun are avoided. Um, these are good uh, spending um, both to improve the quality of public services delivered to citizens and also to invest in the long-run growth of the economy, which by itself will improve fiscal sustainability because the best way to reduce public debt is to increase economic growth in the long run. Um, there's a lot, that, a lot of needs that are not satisfied um, and uh, could be the public 
the, the Irish citizen could be uh, better served uh, by the government. Uh, uh, this long waiting times for medical treatment, congestion in hospitals, large out-of-pocket payments uh, to access health care. Um, I'm thinking also of better high-quality child care services so that women can return to work uh, quickly. Parents in general, but of course women, mothers, uh, can return to work and uh, trust that the child care um, provided to their children will be of high quality uh, and that the children will not be mistreated. Um, helping Irish women go back to the labor market would help to close gender gaps, both in terms of uh, employment gap, but also in terms of wage gap. Another thing that will uh, go wrong for sure is that the Irish population will age. Now, increasingly I tend to think that aging is actually a good thing, uh, but not everybody agrees with me. So the Irish population is going to age and that would put a strain on the health resources. Uh, um, like I said, there are already shortages, uh, long waiting times, a lot of out-of-pocket payments. Uh, uh, pharmaceutical costs are high, actually, in, uh, in, in Ireland. Um, and actually, Brexit would make it worse because 70% of your pharmaceutical consumed in Ireland come from the UK. Um, actually, a lot could be done by um, um, making it, um, the use uh, of uh, generic drugs um, more... Um, Broad than today uh, in order to save money on, the, on, on, on medicine. Uh, another thing that will happen is that the size of the Irish population is going to increase very fast. The Irish population is set to increase at the fastest pace in Europe over coming decades. So there will be even more congestion, um, waiting time, uh, capacity constraint, uh, just because the population will increase. And uh, you need to prepare for it. Uh, you need to invest uh, in uh, housing, in public transportation, in public services in general to prepare for a larger Irish population. Larger population will pollute more. There will be um, more energy consumed with uh, a potential negative effect on uh, fossil fuel uh, consumption, and uh, there will be uh, more waste to be treated, so this investment should be done now. But uh, this honor, uh, okay, I will um, go to my last point. Uh, another important point of, uh, another important item of spending, as uh, Rowena said, is to invest in the modernization and competitiveness of the Irish indigenous sector. Um, Ireland has been very successful attracting FDI, uh, multinational, um, which are highly competitive, highly productive, and highly profitable. But much less has been done to help the Irish SMEs, the Irish indigenous sector. Unfortunately, these Irish firms are um, not so profitable, not so competitive, um, and not so productive. Uh, so the economy is becoming increasingly asymmetric between the superstar multinational, which are doing extremely well, and the Irish SMEs, which actually are not doing very well at all. They are actually struggling. Um, this is not unique to Ireland. It's happening in many countries, the gap between superstar firms and the rest of the economy. But uh, you are more exposed than others, and the gap between these two parts of the economy is actually widening. Now, um, I was glad to hear Rowena um, explain uh, all the good things that uh, the Department of uh, Enterprise, Business and Innovation is doing. Uh, there's actually, in addition to the Fiscal Advisory Council, there's another council called the National Competitiveness Council, which is doing um, very good work. And I would recommend to read their latest uh, productivity report. Uh, so a lot is being done to help Irish uh, companies improve their management talent, uh, make them more innovative. A lot is being done to 
build bridges between the FDI firms and Irish firms. A lot is being done also to facilitate mobility between the FDI uh, companies and the Irish companies. If you are smart, skilled, you're going to work in a foreign firm. They pay much more. Who, in his right mind, with the right diploma, would work for an Irish SME? Uh, and that's wrong. Uh, the talents, all the talents are captured by the foreign firms. So the government has uh, um, introduced a program called KIP, uh, Employment Engagement Pro Program, to help bridge the gap between the two salaries. Now, to conclude, like the previous speakers, I agree that the economy is doing extremely well right now. Let's hope it will continue. But the wise thing to do is to hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Uh, that's what we learned in the last financial crisis, uh, that uh, the good times might not last uh, and that large vulnerabilities might be happening at the most unexpected time. We should take advantage of the good times to prepare for future crises and get ready for them. Reducing public debt should remain a priority, um, but it doesn't mean we should stop spending. Um, we can spend more to improve the quality of public services, prepare for the aging of citizens, get ready for fast demo demographic increase, help Irish women uh, join the labor market, uh, improve access to affordable housing, healthcare, and transportation. We can make more to, do, to have a more inclusive growth and prepare for the long run of the economy. The goal is not to spend more, but to spend wisely and invest in the long term and inclusive growth. Thank you very much.